All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to start talking about the interesting homework that you have. And we're going to talk about later since we are going to see the conversation rules today. Huh. We're going to talk about rules. And we don't like to talk too much about grammar, but this class is not about grammar. Mm -mm. No. This is about conversation. It is actually about speaking or writing if we are talking about uh, using something like WhatsApp or a forum online uh, blog to communicate, to make a conversation. I don't know. Um, these days, we can create conversation not just by facing each other, and you already know that. All righty. So, yes, you do have only one homework for this coming week. Uh, uh -huh. Not really, because you know that every time that we finish classes, we are going to be asking about uh, the class. We are going to have a few questions about the class. And if you don't remember, you can just go and watch the video of class as many times as you need. So, yeah. But right now you have one. And that homework is asking you to actually go online and find a group, a group of people, a forum, a place where you can write something in English when you can communicate to someone else, and especially to people that you don't even know. So uh, this homework is going to push you to go out of your comfort zone. It's definitely going to push you out, definitely. And hopefully very far away from your home. Thanks to uh, everything that is online. So, yeah, I'll explain to you while we get to that slide that talks about uh, that. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, it's about time we are starting our class. We are starting unit three. And uh, in this unit, we're going to talk a lot about conversation. And uh, since this is the name of the class, English Conversation Seminar One or Seminario de Conversación en Inglés Uno, just because it had to be a Spanish name. <laughs> but um, yes, now we're going into conversation, real one. And uh, we're gonna do fine. So just try to follow me. Uh, I'm gonna keep giving you instructions. And if you have any questions, any doubts, just make sure to contact me and you will be fine, hopefully. <laughs> I'm hoping for your questions. So that's one of the things about this homework. All right then. So we start now. Go to next slide. And I choose this specifically just to put you into thinking. Let's see. There's a little story, and this is from Adam Timward. And he had a brief history about conversation. There is a um something in this webpage from Next. And uh, he's saying is, well, actually, like, to converse with a lot of people in our history, uh, we have been involved with drugs, which is not like, uh, it shouldn't be the common thing. But when you go to a meeting, take a look at this, our history, the Greeks, the, the ancient Greeks, they drank wine at their symposia. So a symposia is like a, a huge meeting, like a conference. And it was normal. It was a gathering. It was a, a cocktail. So it was like, okay, since you have to meet new people, uh, it's good to just drink wine. But that was alcohol there. Uh, the British, they were more calm to it. So they started like drinking coffee. But still, in conversations, it's like, oh, you have to have something to drink to start a conversation. And even the French, they use wine too. So that's the thing. <laughs> what he says here, Adam, Adam Tinworth, he says that, well, our conversational aids have been essentially drugs. 
but now these days in in this century over the 2020s it's not just about that we can keep using letters that give conversation permanence but also allow it to be asynchronous which means uh nowadays we can actually use uh not just paper letters we can use online letters we go through it the telephone give us synchronous conversation again but made distance less relevant because we can just take our phones and start a conversation or type a conversation which is pretty awesome huh the modem which is speaking about online conversation made conversation interactive but but there's always the negative parts on it so it's like okay but maybe we don't have privacy anymore uh you have heard about hackers and you have heard about people stealing information and that's something that we still have to consider whenever we go online we should check of, about our privacy and especially on social networks it's getting better when the social networks started being very popular it was a big breach on personal information that got stolen of course but now uh, it's getting better. It's getting better. They have implemented more um, safety measures for our own security, which is good. So yeah, uh, this is the thing. We don't need to drink any alcohol or, or anything to be able to start a conversation. We can use whatever we have in our hands. We can have a conversation online and through a video conference also uh, i hope i could be able to conversate with you guys because you are extremely shy and very quiet but well what can i do force you to do something kind of all right so in this uh class we're going to take a look at about 22 different rules 12 of the first ones are the most common rules for conversation and they come from a very old article that i found and i believe it still works and 10 english fluency rules so you want your conversation to be fluent those 10 are kind of like a big advice super advice for you to become more fluent in english let's take a look at them okay so we start with the 12 golden rules for conversation and like i said it's from a very old article from readers digest and it's from Turk baker josephine let's take a look first one avoid unnecessary detail whenever you are in a conversation you don't need to just keep saying details it wastes time and that's why i chose to show you uh, a watch or a clock over there two of them so uh you might remember that you don't need to give many details in a conversation to make a conversation actually more fluent and more normal is just about saying what it is there if the time sometimes happened that is wasted your audience or the people who is listening to you it might be only one person but they might get bored and they might or you might end up being discarded like okay bye you're not interesting i'm leaving and in terms of english what you want is to practice you want to keep on having a conversation so uh, make sure to keep those unnecessary details number two oh we're gonna go fast so number one was avoid saying unnecessary details number two uh, don't ask too many things before the question that you already asked has been answered so that's the thing don't ask another question before you even get the answer if you wanna be a good speaker 
you also need to be a good listener. That's the simplest rule ever. If you ask how someone's children are, don't jump in with your family help before that the other person has given you an answer. So you have an example here. Don't ask too many questions at the same time or don't start talking more before the answer from the other person or the other people, all right? Number three, do not interrupt another while he or she is speaking. Like I said before in number two, you need to be a good listener. Being a good listener is also part of the conversation. Rule number three. So also try to make your story short, giving the other person a chance to speak and not interrupt. Okay, like as you can see on the uh, photograph on the picture on your left, don't interrupt without giving the chance to the other person to speak. Be a good listener. Again, that's part of being um, in a conversation. Who do not contradict, especially if it is not important. I know there's a lot of people who like to just contradict, and I don't know why. And like it says here, right or wrong. You don't have the right to just push people and try to contradict. You are inserting unnecessary details into the person's story. Is the other person's story, not yours. So in any conversation, especially formal, but it's also part of informal conversations, you shouldn't interrupt people or you shouldn't contradict people because you're supposed to listen to the other story, try to accept what they have and then add to the conversation. Look at this, the person who contradicts frequently restate, restate, subtract the matter in another way. It switches the conversation and it can end up very bad when you are starting to contradict someone. So, no, that's a big no. No, no, no. Do not do all the talking. Have you ever seen this? Have you seen one of you? One of your friends who uh, is always the one who wants to talk. There's a lot of people like that. And in a conversation, it's like, uh, man, I want to talk. I also want to be part of this conversation. A conversation should be a dialogue between the people that is present, not a monologue. That's the thing. It shouldn't be a monologue. Okay, no, 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 that's a big, no. Look at this, like friends. Friends have all things in common. So you have things to share. So it shouldn't just be one person's monologue. It shouldn't just be one person speaking. So uh, all ask questions. You can ask questions to find out what you both or what everybody around has in common. Simple things like we call the icebreakers, like, hey, um, what are you from? If you haven't met the, that person before. Or, hey, what did you eat? Oh, I ate the same. Now we're talking. Now we're seeing common things. And things like uh, when it's just friendly, it's like, hey, what are your favorite mu music? What is your favorite movie? Um, favorite colors? And then you start moving and you start finding things in common and you end up being such great conversers, such great friends in the end. So remember to do this. Don't be uh, a stealer of the conversation. Don't do all the talking like what I'm doing right now. But this is different because I'm um, giving a lecture right now. So number six, number six already. Don't always be the hero of your story. However, the story should have a hero. And that's what I show these pictures of heroes. 
don't always be the hero of your story. It does, I have had in my experience uh, conversations with people and whenever you are saying something that happened to you, then the other person comes and says that uh, that happened to them or that happened even in a, in a words matter or that happened that they were able to solve the problem better than you did. So it's like, in the end, that conversation didn't go well because the other person, or that could be you, it's trying to just outshine everyone. Meaning of, it's trying to just be in one. Same with the last rule, with rule number five. It's trying to just talk about yourself is not good. But like it says here, whenever you're sharing a story, you can look about the people surrounding you. Uh, you can start adding them to, to your conversation. And like it says here, your conversation, if it has a story, it may have a hero on the story. Try to find the positive things on it and you can push the people and you can let them shine too. So yes, don't always try to be the best person there is because the rest of the people is important and the rest of the people are also good and they also have good stories. So remember about the rest of the people. Number seven, we're going fast. Choose a subject of mutual interest. Whenever you're speaking, with somebody else. If you don't have the subject yet, try to choose something that you can both conversate. Draw the person's interests out and don't hinge the conversation on politics when it should be on potatoes or on poetry. So he, here is the thing. Um, in English culture, especially, well, especially American English, and, but also British English. There's something called the politically correct, which doesn't have to, uh, to be anything about politics. It is about respecting the other person and actually uh, try to speak like this, something that has mutual interest because you don't want to hurt, hurt the other person's feelings you need to avoid hurting the other person. And two topics that are very difficult to speak in these cultures, in our Western cultures, that, that includes all the continent, all the American continent, and that also includes uh, the European continent. We have uh, the tendency to not speak about religion and politics because we may end up arguing and picking up fights with just random people or with family. You should avoid this topic because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. Or if you are not well prepared to speak about politics, if you are not uh, well versed, if you haven't studied for true about politics, Mm -mm, is not a good topic for conversation. So you better be politically correct. Don't hurt the feelings of the other people. She's a subject of mutual interest. Number eight, and like we have been talking about this since rule number two, be a good listener. You will naturally become one if you follow the above rules. Meaning? If you follow all the rules, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, all of this one. Take a look at what the Dalai Lama said. When you talk, you're only repeating what you already know, what it is in your brain. If you listen, you may learn something new. Huh. It's better to listen. Be a good listener. Good one, huh? Number nine, 
the conversation should be in harmony with the surrounding. It should take into consideration the people in your surroundings. Do not talk about she's when the moon will be a more fitting topic. It's like, hey, we're talking about um, astronomy and you're talking about food. It's like, hey, 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 hey. We, everyone in this conversation, should be able to talk about the same topic. Also, don't discount the appropriateness of silence. If you have nothing to say in that part of the conversation, you better be silent. Just listen. Your opportunity, your chance to speak will come. So, yeah, like it says, don't discount the appropriateness of silence. Be a good listener. Remember that. And if you don't have anything to say, be quiet. Huh. Number 10, do not exaggerate. Have you ever heard people exaggerating? Uh-huh. Like the picture I show you here. <laughs> this guy over here says, I'm the greatest bird ever. Huh. Not everything is the best, the worst, or the funniest. So, no, the tendency to exaggerate, it only shows your ego, that you are egocentric, that you are uh, also called a narcissist. Like, uh -uh, that's not something good to exaggerate and also to exaggerate trying to show that you are better than the others ah it's a discourage for the conversation no one likes to listen to someone that is just bragging or trying to show himself or herself and saying that ha huh, there's no one else or no one better than me hmm that sounds snobbish Novish is uh, related to what we said in Spanish, uh, presa. So, uh, no, that's not okay when you are speaking in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Don't exaggerate. Okay, yeah. So, we're almost done with the 12 first rules. Number 11, do not misquote. There's people who love to use quotes. Uh, a quote is a saying that another person uh, has uh, published or, or a famous phrase. But that quotation, that phrase, that saying should be for the occasion. Do not just try to use a phrase from someone else and just because you think that you're gonna uh, show yourself as a smart person, you may end up losing everyone in your conversation. And it should be an occasion for every quotation. Does that make any sense? I hope so. Really? And like the picture that I showed, uh, that I choose to show you here, uh, Darth Vader, is using two different, uh, it's sort of like quotations here, phrases, laugh out loud, what? It's like, it's something very different one from the other. Mm -mm. So no, you need to go back to what it is for the conversation. So if you don't know how to use quotations, better not use them, just keep them out. And for number 12, Rule number 12 is about cultivating tact. Have you ever heard about this? I have a lot of it. It's like, like this uh, woman over here. Huh. Tacto. Have conversational tact. Hmm. You need to be careful on what you're speaking. And especially if you can see the picture from this woman, uh, there's a lot of bad words wrong language so uh that's why we keep on telling you especially university students like you are watch out your words 
watch out for what you're saying. You need to have tact. Where you're using this language might not be the correct place. Be very, very careful about that. We have a, a longer description here. Do not be untruthful, but also don't feel the need to be hurtful. Do not say someone looks unwell, sick, or tired. So it's not just about bad words. You need to have tact. Tacto. So don't, don't tell a person if that person looks a little sick. It's better to don't say anything, unless it is your best friend. If you are that close as being a great friend, you can say something. But other than that, you should avoid those questions. Or unless the person is dying, of course, you need to help. But something just simple like, ah, oh, you look tired. It may, it could make the other person uncomfortable. And then you could stop the conversation right there. But you don't want to have that. Don't hint at it by asking if she had a long night, if we're talking about the tiredness, if she's tired. Remember, silence is an option. Be quiet. Silence is an option. Say the right thing or say nothing at all. You need to have tact in a conversation. So those were the 12 rules. Pretty fast. And I hope that you can go ahead uh, through all of these rules and you're going to have questions about them, of course, when we finish class. That's the second homework. But now uh, we're going to take a look at something that is more fun which is the fluency rules. How to become fluent in English? How to become fluent? You already know a lot of vocabulary. Like if we take a look at the, the words that, you, that are in the background, body, brain, sequence, you already know those words. Improvisation, how can you improvise in a conversation or and whenever you're speaking, if it is an oral presentation, how can you improvise? How can you make the conversation more interested? How can you make yourself be more fluent? Yes. It's not that hard as you may think. This is, uh, I took these 10 uh, fluency rules from uh, an article published also online. It's for English anyone. And you can take a look at the web page if you want. You can just click on it. So fluency is a habit, number one. Is that true, Professor? Is fluency a habit? So can I speak fluent? Everybody can. And this is not just for English. This is for every language. But how do you make it and have a habit? Well, take a look at what it says here. The skills of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So those are the four skills that we use for every language. Reading, writing, listening, and speaking are nothing more than habits formed over time. The problem for everyone is that most learners develop habits that stop them from becoming strong communicators. So that's the problem. You haven't been doing what you need to do. But now we can change it. We can acquire the habit. How do we do that? Well, a habit is listening to a natural sounding dialogues on English language learning. You can use TV, you can listen to radio programs, you can study more vocabulary words. Here's the thing, good news. You can replace the harmful habit you form with helpful ones easily. The simple way to do this is to just practice. Start reading something in English. Start listening to the real music in English. Start watching your TV in English. Eventually, your habit for fluency 
is going to come to you. And that's what we're looking for. Number two, learn like natives. Can you actually learn like native speakers? You were born in a Spanish language country. Can you learn as native speakers? Yeah, of course. Everyone can do that. Take a look at this. Most students learn English through their native language. Uh -huh. But this, this is sort of a problem. When you're learning English and at the same time translating to Spanish, it makes your brain work harder. This is why the students often have to translate in their heads before speaking, and it takes longer. If I ask you a question, then you start like, ah, oh, what does that mean? And then you ask your brain, you translate to Spanish, and then you look the words in Spanish to answer back. And then now that you have the answer in Spanish, you try to put words in English, and it takes a long time. So that can't, absolutely can't, be fluent stops you to speak fast to understand native english speakers and speak automatically you need to start consuming native english content that's appropriate for your ability level and that's why i've chosen i chose this picture that you're seeing with little kids because you should start if you feel like you lack of fluency it's better to start with this simple vocabulary start reading or start watching tv programs for children in english it will be easier and then you can start moving on towards um, more complicated language programs but for now it should be a good way to start uh, practicing. Choose something that you already understand at least 80 to 90%. Those uh, cartoons in, um, in English language, you can go and watch the Disney Channel. You can watch uh, the program like Dora. Um, it's good for you to, to practice. It's very easy English. It has lots of pictures that you can look at the background and you can learn a lot from those cartoons. And if you are afraid like, ah, that you may feel ashamed because you feel that you are an adult and that you shouldn't be watching cartoons, hey, who said that? Nobody said that cartoons are not for adults. You can just go and watch them there's nothing wrong about that. Nothing for real, nothing really wrong about that. It's okay to just watch something for kids and it's going to help you a lot. Like Alex says, do, 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 Dora. Yeah, you should uh, go watch it. I'm serious about this. Uh, and if not, I'm just going to recommend you as the homework later on during this, this unit to just watch at least one chapter of Dora just because because i want you to understand how important and how good for your conversation the practice the absorption the habit of learning english it will eventually give you the fluency that you're looking for review this content until you can use it in conversations without hesitation then as you're understanding it and confidence grow move on to more challenging material i already explained that one so we go to number three for fluency divide and conquer yes but how can you do this here's a simple formula for rapid fluency this is from Ter tim ferris and it, it, they call him they call him the patron saint of learning <laughs> let's see three things divide select and order how can you divide divide the native english content you want to learn into easy to understand pieces this could be things like the vocabulary word or grammar points found in a song go look for a song divide the song understand the, the vocabulary that is easier just keep it like that and then 
you select the most important 20% of information to focus on that will give you the 80%. If you try to understand that 20%, eventually you're going to understand the rest of it. As simple as it sounds, yes, it is simple. It's not as hard as you think. Order the pieces of information you've selected from basic to complex and begin learning. You want to be more fluent? Try to use this. Culture is essential. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with this guy. Uh, he's Buddy Baluster. He has a TV show. And uh, it, it's, it's in English. And he's an Italian guy. He comes from an Italian family. He shows all of the time how they do and bake and how his family relates. And, but being part of the culture of, from, from New York City and from uh, the states surrounding New York. So it's like, they show you a lot about the language culture in a TV program. So this is the thing. I'm, telling you if you want to learn more about the language you need to investigate you need to immerse yourself into the culture and one of the things to do that is yes to watch a tv program but this one is a little more advanced like i said you need to find yourself uh, probably in children cartoons and then move forward to more complicated ones if you want to watch something like this show uh you can always 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 use the subtitles english subtitles of course and once you keep practicing eventually you are going to be able to take out the subtitles and you will be able to understand everything mm -hmm. a language is more than nouns verbs and adjectives if you do not also understand a community's meat pop culture references stories and jokes you will miss much of what's being said. Double the speed at which you get fluent by learning language with culture. Master your grammar through cooking shows. That's why I chose this guy. Cooking shows are uh, fairly easy to understand because on what you're seeing, all of the surroundings, maybe the vocabulary you cannot understand much, but you can see every detail when they are moving you can see the ingredients and you can practice a lot cooking shows are really good for practicing the language build your vocabulary while fixing cars improve your pronunciation as you enjoy plays musicals operas that's kind of hard for us because we live in an area where you cannot just go and watch these things but you can watch them online and it's going to help. Keep that in mind. Culture is essential. Oh, of course. Number five, study the words together. That's another thing. One word, like here, I have a series of words uh, on the left that you can see. Sometimes. Does that have a meaning? If you just leave it alone, it doesn't really have a meaning. But if you talk about another word like enough, it doesn't give you a true meaning to everything. You need to have phrases. You need to have entire sentences. If we put the words together, like sometimes words are not enough. Now we have a sentence and now it has a meaning. Phrases, and not words, not just a few words, are the real units of fluency. And when you learn phrases, you discover how ideas connect. Alex, can you, uh, can you close your microphone, please, Alejandro? Yes, thank you. Because, well, if you're not talking, then we can hear the background noises. When you learn phrases, you discover how ideas connect and the sounds of words blend. 
This trains you to understand the fast speech of native English speakers and helps you to improve your pronunciation. Group of words also form stories that are easier for you to visualize and remember. So whenever you are repeating something, if you're trying to have a conversation, if you're trying to say something, don't use one word. Use sentences, entire sentences. Make them bigger. Use phrases, complete ones, not just a few words, please. Use videos. Nowadays, who doesn't go and watch videos? Even though videos require far more time and energy to produce than text or audio lessons, we, or meaning those of us, your professors, a lot of people is creating the information and videos. And I have been using them for classes also. I've been recommending to you uh, a few videos so you can use them, watch them, and learn from them. That is still that words by themselves only communicate 7% of what we want to express. But 38% of the uh, meaning expressed in normal conversation comes from pitch and intonation. The visual language, it's more important. 55% of the understanding comes from visual. That's why videos are good. You can just watch them and learn from what you're seeing. That's really, really good. Videos give you the total picture of a language's word, sounds, and actions. They also significantly increase your ability to remember what you are studying. So instead of just using a book for studying English, instead of, yeah, instead of just uh, trying uh, to fill up an exercise, you can just keep using videos, watch a cooking show, watch cartoons. Like what, what I'm saying is things like a book. I don't know if you can see it. A book will help you understand more vocabulary, but in terms of conversing, even writing, is not gonna help you much if it's only a workbook. But you can also read. You can read some stories and uh, that is going to help you a lot, a lot to improve your fluency. Number seven, limit your scope. Oh, here's the thing, millions of English learners know lots of words and expressions, but can use them competently in conversations. And here's where you are right now. You have a lot of vocabulary in your brains already. This is often a consequence of studying too much and mastering too little. True reality, fluency is measured by what you can use, not what you know. So you need to understand how to use those words that you already know. If you understand how to use them, you can have a big, big conversation with anyone and you can make yourself be, be understood with everyone. There's a saying that if you know about like 10 verbs, 10 nouns, 10 adjectives, Mm. There's another thing over there, but if you know about these words, you can make sentences, phrases, and you can end up having like a thousand sentences combined, which means you already know you, all of you, you already know more much more than just 10 verbs, much more than just 10 nouns, much more than just 10 adjectives, and so on. Which means that you already are able to build or construct 
huge line of conversation. You need to put them into practice. And that's what limiting the scope means. Use the words that you already know. And if you are learning more words, keep working on this. How can you use those words? And try to find examples about those. Practice with them. That will make you know the vocabulary and become truly, really fluent. Number eight, connect. Uh huh. Connect. And this is where I am going to pause because the homework is about this. Connect. Take a look at this about fluency and what you can see from the background picture. It's about connecting to the network. Yes, these days we're going to use that, connecting through the network through internet. Fluency is cultivated in the real world. Mm -hmm. So connect with native speakers and start practicing to find them. And they are everywhere in the world, everywhere. Forget about the English and look for online forums, groups, groups, and communicate of native language speakers who share your interest. This is your homework. Of, this is what your homework is about today. You're gonna go and find a place through the internet where you can find a group, people that's, that are um, English speakers. So I'm not interested in finding a Spanish forum or a Spanish group because this is not a class for Spanish. This is about practicing your conversation skills in the English language. So you're gonna go online and you're going to find a community that you can talk to and you're going to talk to them. You're going to write something. That's the homework, uh-huh. And you're going to just show the evidence, the true evidence from your conversation. Focus on the activities you enjoy and you will create lasting friendships with native speakers naturally. There is thousands of places online, communities that will be about your same interest. For example, I'm just giving you a very simple example of how you can connect with someone. If you are a fan of a group or a singer, you can just go online and find a group of fans. And that could be through Facebook, you can go to Instagram, but you can go to the fan page uh, and start a conversation with those people because you may share the same like from uh, that artist, from that singer, and you can just talk. You can even do it in YouTube. YouTube uh, has a forum below the videos, below each video, and you can make some comments on it. And especially if somebody answers back to you or you can answer back to another comment, that's important. I want you to experience the connection with native speakers, or at least people who speak English anywhere. I don't care if they are na not native because it could be people from uh, France that are speaking English online. It could be people from India that are speaking English online. So uh, as long as you're going to be practicing and you're going to be connecting and you're going to start building your network for the language, that's okay. That's perfect. So yes, this is interesting for your homework because you are going to start a conversation with somebody that you don't know and it's going to work i'm telling you i'm very excited about how this is going to turn out yes we're almost finishing uh, this is rule number nine stretch yourself just because you hear the same questions in conversation repeatedly doesn't mean you have to give the same answers. For example, when you are in a big gathering of people, you are the new guy over there and then they are asking you, where are you from? So here's uh, the thing, you're from New York 
or the Upper East Side of New York? That's the question. And so uh, you can think about answering, oh, I am from New York. But then you hear the same question and then you start getting tired of just answering, oh, I'm from Moctezuma. No, no, no. You can start saying a little more. That's what, it say. That's what it means when it says stretch yourself. If I ask you uh, and then you said, oh, I'm from Moctezuma. And then the other person asks you, hey, where are you from? And you're, okay, I'm from Moctezuma, but I'm also a student in the Universidad de la Sierra there. I'm an engineering student. Ah, that's interesting. And now the other person starts conversing with you. But if you just keep on saying just one word, not phrases, and not getting interested in yourself, you're going to break the conversation and you are going to stop the habit of being fluent. So you need to start thinking every time that you're going to speak. You can uh, answer the same question to another person who comes. Where are you from? I'm from Moctezuma, but my parents were born in Hermosillo. And uh, when they were uh, older, they came to, the to this town. I was already born in Hermosillo, but then uh, they decided to raise me here. And I love it. This has, uh, this is a very quiet area. I can go around the town at any time and it's a safe place. So now you're using your words. You're stretching yourself. You start being fluent, which is the objective. Be fluent. And last but not least, rule number 10 for being fluent, persistence. You need to keep building. Persistence is the one trait shared by all students who get fluent. You guys, if you want to speak fast, not as a raw but. If you want to speak faster, you need to start working on those rules. You need to start practicing. You need to be persistent. You need to uh, try to do all that has been recommended to you today. Keep moving towards your goals. Even if you only have five minutes a day, if you only have five minutes a day to practice English, five minutes a day will be good. But if you only practice English, whenever you have to finish a homework, you're never going to be fluent. You need to have the goal to learn to speak faster in English. It's important to you. If you want to have the job of your dreams, the English language is more important even than math, even than your productivity classes, your manufacturing class, because you cannot go and work in manufacturing if you do not know English. You are going to end up not being a good engineer if you don't know the English language. So, like it says here, at least five minutes a day, at least five minutes a day, every day. You need to practice something in the language every day. And your persistence will pay off. You will end up being more fluent every day. And in the moment that you less than you least Expected, you are going to be speaking fast and as a native speaker but you need to set up your goal you need to understand that you need the language and you need to practice so this have been the 12 conversation rules the 12 golden conversation rules and the 10 fluency rules that in a hope for you to understand that you need to do several things to start speaking better. This is the type of class that it's type of it's the type of class that is advising you on what to do if you want to use more um, more words, if you want to know more about the language. So as a resume, what you need to do is practice. How? 
you can read, you can write, you can listen, you can watch. Go read a comic book, a simple book. Eventually you can move to a more interesting and a harder type of written material. But comics books are simple and easy to read. Start with those for little children and then move on to a more complicated one. Watch, watch your TV shows, but in English. Start with cartoons, start with something like Dora. Listen, listen to music in English. Go watch, look fine, look for the lyrics online, the lyrics, what uh, those lyrics mean. Investigate the meaning of those lyrics. Research the vocabulary written there. And while you're doing that, when you're listening to songs, you can practice your speaking. Sing. Try to find your favorite songs in English and sing them. You can just sing those songs and you're going to be more fluent when you start singing. This is not about a singing competition. This is about the language. Go and find more about the culture of the English speakers. Watch the TV shows like the cooking shows. Like I said, cooking shows are really, really good and easy to understand because everything in the surroundings explains what's happening. And then they tell you about uh, all of the materials for the recipes that they are using. And then you keep on learning a lot of vocabulary and common vocabulary for a kitchen also. So go and do something for you're at least five minutes a day. Be persistent. And you are going to end up being better with the language. Definitely. Definitely. You're going to do much, much better with the language. So in these uh, terms, when I mention uh, the rule number eight about connecting, I already told you about the homework that you're going to be uh, doing this week. With that said, we are finished. We have finished this class, this lecture, and you just need to wait for this class uh, video to upload. Once it's uploaded, as usual, I'll let you know. And once it's uploaded, you're going to have a few days to answer the questions about the class. To make sure that you paid attention because it has been a monologue basically, and I don't just want to have this monologue. I want you to make conversation and that's what you're going to be writing. That's, you're going to be using your uh, skills for writing in English when you answer the question about this class, about today's class, all right? Any questions before we leave? Nope. Okay, now there are no questions. All right, Carmen, thank you for being my student today. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a safe uh, rest of the week. Have a safe weekend. Be safe, remember to stay at home. And, and so we are going to be uh, 